Good morning, ladies. Good morning. We're so happy you're with us this morning. Right? Yeah, we are. <laughs> so are happy. you in agreement with that, Chris? <laughs> I sure am. <laughs> Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing in this great time that we are living in? We right? missed you so much. Oh, guy, we're ready. We're so, so ready, ready to see your faces yes. again. I miss them. I miss them yeah, too. But do. but we're doing it. We're doing this. Yes. And that's something. And this is wonderful. <laughs> yes, isn't it, it is. I mean, thank yeah. goodness for technology <laughs> yeah. and what we have and what God has given us. And I really appreciate it. I mm -hmm. appreciate Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Is there anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> Those two. <laughs> um, YouTube. Yeah, yes, YouTube. You I, do. I, I knew there was something else. I appreciate them <laughs> so much more than I did just at the beginning of the year. It's so true. My appreciation has gone up for social media to a whole nother level. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Well, anyway, what we want to do is we want to start off our Thursday morning. First of all, welcoming any first time guests that we have. We yes. are so happy you're with us. Yes. We're just a bunch of crazy women that love Jesus. Yeah. In and, a nutshell. Yeah, we really do. And we love one another. Yes. And so we're just doing a conversation here. We love talking about Jesus, sharing about him. Chris and I, before uh, this started, we were just sitting here praying and we just started crying, just, you know, yep. loving Jesus, just how good he is. Yeah. Even in the midst of all things that are just going mm -hmm. on. I mean, he is so good, isn't he? So, so good. I'm just so grateful, so mm -hmm. grateful for him. Yeah. But what we want to do right now mm -hmm. is we want to start our Thursday morning with some shout outs. Yes, we so, do. Shall we start? Yes, I have a bajillion. Patty, Jenna, Love you so much. Denise is with us today. We have, oh, the other Denise. I've got Danielle, and I've got Debbie, and let's see. I've got Kiana and Sean. And I've got Janita. Miss Janita is here with us. We have Candice and Sonia. Hey, girls. And let's see. It says Dinah, but isn't Dinah, is that Deanna? It's, it's Diana. Oh, Diana. I, I didn't know if it was Deanna or Diana. We I didn't have know which many one it was. forms of that name, yes. but y'all are unique girls. Yes, absolutely. Megan Switzer's with us. Hi, Carol, Megan. Hi, Carol. Carol's on with us. We've got Kelly and Mariah and, and Erica and Erica. Pastor Jeff. Oh, wait. I just, I, I think we have to do a shout out. I mm -hmm. just see right here. Happy birthday to Sean. It's Sean. Sean's birthday. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday to you. Happy quarantine birthday. Party hard, girl. Yeah, that's right. Those are Alone. the best, right? The yeah. quarantine. We've, we've had a few of those <laughs> in our homes. So um, also, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. We're happy you are with us this morning. Hi, okay. You want to do a couple more? No. Okay. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get on with business here. We got a lot to discuss today. Yeah. And, you know, we do a Thursday fun. Yeah. And um, I had something planned. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had um, just, you know, we had some sad news this yes. week. And that is that um, beloved Ravi Zacharias yeah. went home to be with Jesus yes. on Tuesday. And... We know him here at the church, and we actually know him at Rock Women. We've actually um, shared some of his videos and, yes. and done some things uh, yes. with his teachings. Yeah. Uh, what an incredible man of God he was. Yes. And such a pillar, such a champion mm -hmm. of faith to our world. Yes. And I've heard people say that where Billy Graham was the um, greatest evangelist, Ravi Zacharias was the greatest apologist. Yes. And so what we wanted to do is we just wanted to honor him. Yeah. And, you know, we've been praying for his family and everybody that... Uh, all the lives, you know, that his ministry, everybody that he's touched, he has yeah. touched so many all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to read a few of our favorite quotes mm -hmm. from him. Yes. So I'm going to start with, with yeah. one and then you can, you can share some. Yeah. And this man, if, if you don't know him, you need to Google, you need to YouTube, uh, just an incredible man of God. And I, I just always loved just his grace and uh, just the way he, he won't have a debate with somebody. No. He'll have a conversation with somebody yeah. and just honored, you know, a, another person's way of thinking and belief, even though he knows, you know, that, that there is one way yeah. and that is Jesus Christ, yeah. but just the way he was. I just appreciated so much about him. So one of my favorite quotes of his, and there's several, but it's, uh, he says, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. Woo! Isn't that neat? That's so incredible. How about you? Well, uh, one of my favorites is God often reinforces our faith after we trust him, oh, not beautiful. before. 
Isn't that so beautiful? Mm -hmm. So profound. How about this one? Uh, An argument may remove doubt, but only the Holy Spirit can convict the truth. Wow. Bam. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, How about evil is a violation of purpose, the purpose of your creator and mine. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, how about this one? Beginning well is a momentary thing. Finishing well is a lifelong thing. Yes. And I can honestly say that I believe 100% that he finished well. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. Um, one other one that I have is there's no greater discovery than seeing God as the author of your destiny. Wow. Yeah. The author of your destiny. Isn't that neat? Mm-hmm. Okay, how about this one? This one uh, I've heard quoted quite often. We have the right to believe whatever we want, but not everything we believe is right. There we go. Right? Such a check. Yeah. Such a check for us. And the one of my favorites is love is hard work. It's the hardest work I know of. Work from which you are never entitled to take a a vacation. Wow. Never. Mm -mm. You never take a vacation from love. Mm -mm. And that just shows the kind of man that Ravi was. And, you know, so just our our hearts are are for the whole ministry, for Mm -hmm. his family, for his wife and his children and and everything. But we're just so grateful that we got to live in a day and an age where Ravi walked on this earth at the same time we did. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting. Okay. So we've got a really fun conversation today. Yes, we do. It's one of my favorite women in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I love her so much, and and I've just been so reminded about her. I, I think probably especially in this quarantine time, mm-hmm. just just because of kind of her situation. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels. A lot of parallels. So we're going to talk about the woman with the issue of blood. Yay! Yeah. So that's going to be fun today. <laughs> so excited. Um, can we just go before the Lord real yes. quick? Let's let's pray. Father, yes. we just thank you for this incredible time mm-hmm. that we have to share your word and just to just to to speak the things that you would have us speak holy spirit may it just be life and may it be life changing to us in jesus name amen, amen. um so what i uh, i kind of came up with this idea mm-hmm. because chris and i were talking about you know what should we share and who should we share or whatever and yeah. so she's one of my favorites i said well can we and chris of course graciously said definitely yep You've got lots of great so thoughts gracious. about her. Yeah. So I just wanted to give a little bit, I guess, of just biblical background, mm-hmm. okay, about about her. And mm-hmm. in, in biblical days, that um, there was certain situations and conditions that would make a person ceremonially ceremonially unclean. Yes. Okay. Um, if you were a leper. Mm-hmm. If you were a leper, you were definitely unclean. You couldn't yeah. touch anybody. You, you had to stay away. You can't come to birthday parties. Yeah, you had to None stay away it. from everybody. Yeah. That was, you know, definitely one. Uh, if you touched a dead person, yep, you, you could not touch a, a dead person. That would make you ceremonially unclean. Yes. And for women, if you were having your monthly menstrual cycle, mm-hmm. you were ceremonially unclean. And Leviticus 15 talks about that. Mm-hmm. And so we're talking about this woman back in the day of the Jewish law and the time when she was ceremonially unclean, but not just for a certain time of month, for 12 years years. Yeah. She, the Bible says that she was hemorrhaging, that she was bleeding consistently, nonstop for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine something like that. No, 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 no. That, that's a complete other level. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, the Bible doesn't say if she was married or unmarried, but she probably likely wasn't married. And if she Mm -hmm. was married, her husband had grounds for divorce Yes, back in the, the Jewish law. Mm -hmm wouldn't have been able to have children. Right. Right. And if she had children, she would no longer be able to have the place of mother in their life. She couldn't parent them. She couldn't come near them. Absolutely. So, I mean, we're talking about, you know, a a woman with with quite a a travesty that she's, you know, been dealing with Mm -hmm. for a very long time in her life. So, on top of all of that, she couldn't even worship in the temple. Mm-mm. She couldn't go to the temple. I right. mean, she couldn't do any of those things that, that she may have wanted to mm-hmm. do. She had to stay away. She was literally ostracized yeah. from her community and from her culture. Yes. So can we talk about this setup in the, in the time? Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so we're going to read. The, the story is found in Luke and the story is found in Mark. And it's Luke chapter 8 and Mark chapter 5. We're going to read the story out of Luke. But if you have time, read the story out of Mark chapter 5. There's a lot of details in that. And so the the setup is kind of like this. So Jesus has just come back from the other side of the lake. He's getting out of the boat. And this, this prominent Jewish leader 
um, synagogue leader named Jairus. He comes to Jesus and, and, and he says, Jesus, oh my goodness, my 12-year-old daughter, she's near death. She's going to die. I need you to come right now. I need you to lay your hands on her and I need you to perform a miracle and heal her. And so Jesus, okay, let's go do this. Here's the thing though. Jesus, everywhere Jesus went, there was crowds everywhere. So he's on his way to perform this miracle to heal Jairus' daughter, and there are crowds just absolutely everywhere. In fact, the Bible says that they were crowding him so much that they were almost knocking him over. They were thronging him on all sides. So here he is all over the place. So we're in the midst of this crowd, and I'm going to pick up the story in Luke chapter 8, okay? I'm going to read out of the passage, the uh, Passion Translation, okay? It says, In the crowd that day was a woman who had suffered greatly for 12 years from slow bleeding. Even though she had spent all that she had on healers, she was still suffering. Pressing in through the crowd, she came up behind Jesus and touched the tassel of his prayer shawl. Instantly, her bleeding stopped and she was healed. Jesus suddenly stopped and said to his disciples, someone touched me. Who is it? While they all denied it, Peter pointed out, Master, everyone is touching you, trying to get close to you. The crowds are so thick we can't walk through all these people without being jostled. Jesus replied, yes, but I felt a power surge through me. Someone touched me to be healed, and they received their healing. When the woman realized she couldn't hide any longer, she came and fell trembling at Jesus' feet. Before the entire crowd, she declared, I was desperate to touch you, Jesus, for I knew if I could just touch even the fringe of your robe, I would be healed. Jesus responded, Beloved daughter, your faith in me has released your healing. You may go with my peace. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things, the first thing that stood out to me was just the fact that she had suffered. You know, suffering is a really strong word. And when we, just like how we talked about just kind of her situation, just the fact that she had suffered physically from, from an illness and the fact that she had suffered emotionally and relationally from the yeah. social isolation. Um, and financially, she spent everything that she had yeah. on healers. And the fact that it says that she suffered greatly and she was still suffering. Just it, it really paints a picture of a woman in, in great and deep pain. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, when you think of suffering, I, I, I think for us, you know, we, we could probably say, yeah, I'm suffering. I'm suffering right yeah. now. I'm suffering because mm -hmm. I've lost my job. Mm -hmm. I'm suffering because I have to homeschool my children because my children aren't allowed to go out. I'm suffering because I can't go out because mm -hmm. every time I do go out, I, I have to, you know, wear a mask or I can't do this or I have to do that or there's all these restrictions. I mean, we have a different type of suffering right now. Yes. But to the level of what she was suffering, yes. I think it's just, in my world, it's unimaginable yeah. right now. And we are in that no-touch environment, but there's no social isolation that can stop the touch of Jesus in our lives. Absolutely. There's no, like, he is not adhering to the guidelines. Absolutely. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he's he is still super intimately involved in yeah. our world and yeah. in our lives, and he wants to touch every single part of who we are yeah. with his healing power. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for that. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, what about, I mean, what about like the, the recognizing Jesus in, 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 in what was going on in her life? Oh, yeah. She saw him and she, I, I just, I just like feel her like zoning in on him, like completely irrespective of what he was doing or what he was focused on. She saw him as the complete source of her breakthrough. I mean, can you imagine, put yourself in that position Put yourself in that for a second, because you know I love to do that. Mm -hmm. In this story, here she is. I mean, she's desperate. Yes. The Bible says she's desperate. She's yeah. desperate. Have you ever been so desperate for something yeah. that you're willing to do whatever it is mm -hmm. that you need to do yeah. to get the results that you need to get in order to survive? Yeah. And she had, you know, she had gone to every other place. And I think sometimes in our lives we have to go um, we have to figure out for ourselves that no other source yeah. can Why bring do you the think breakthrough. That is, though, Chris. <laughs> I mean, 
it's it's so, so many daughters, reasons. right? I mean, we're daughters <laughs> we're of the daughters. king, right? And yet we do that. I think sometimes it's it's just in our nature, in our human nature. Yeah, I was going to say pride. Yeah, you know, sometimes okay, we don't. Absolutely. We don't want to admit that we have, you know, because in coming to Jesus, there's, <laughs> we, we have to lay down in yeah. order that we can receive. Absolutely. We have to release what's in our hand um, before we can receive what yeah. he has for us. So sometimes we're not necessarily interested in the exchange. Sure. We want what he has, but we don't want to give him ourselves in, Ooh. in response. Ooh, that's that's a hard one. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm going to chew on that one for a few minutes. Okay. But so true. <laughs> okay. So, so now let's talk about she touched him. She, she did. She touched the hem of his robe. Yes, she did. And, you know, how we touch somebody and where we touch them is very indicative of our motivation and what we want. And it's very interesting that she touched him on the tassel of his prayer yeah. shawl. And the reason that she did that, whether she realized it or not, which I think she did because she was a Jewish girl in this time and okay. they would have known. Sure. Um, but the tassel was on the corner of the prayer shawl that Jesus would have been wearing as a, as a man of God. And the tassel was meant to symbolize all of the commandments and promises of God. The woman was laying hold of, her, of a promise for healing mm. when she touched that. Wow. Yeah. So she went straight to the source. Yes. Knowing when I do this, mm -hmm. not if I do this, yeah. but when I do this, I will receive mm -hmm. from him. Yes. And she touched him in faith. I mean, this woman, she's, she's hemorrhaging, she's bleeding. And we know that when you're losing blood, you're, you're weak. Sure. You're, you're not able, you don't have a lot of strength. So she, the, the amount of strength that she would have had to summon, the amount of determination that she would have had to summon yeah. to push through a crowd of jostling, uh, mostly men, yeah. you know, it, yeah. it, to, to get to Jesus and to actually get through. I don't know if you've ever been to like a concert, but the security is insane yeah. around people who are like, Ooh, you know, like if I were like, I'm going to touch Beyonce, first of all, Beyonce, if you're watching, this, <laughs> I'm not going to, but like the amount of security that I would have to push through physically, right. the amount of, of determination that I would have to have it, it would, it would come from, from a deep place, yeah. that desperate place. Yeah, that desperate place. Yeah, so she, like, honed in on Jesus, yeah. and she was like, if I can just touch him, yeah. not anybody else, if I could touch him, I will be healed. Yeah, and I think that in our own lives, you know, maybe we don't have an ailment to this extent, right. or maybe, you know, we, we haven't experienced mm -hmm. something to this extent, but has there been a time in your life where you just need, you know the only one, the only one who can answer, the only one who can come through, the only one who can relieve and give you reprieve is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I have been in that place in my life. And sometimes it's even in my prayer closet, you know, where mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm so heavy, so burdened with something. Yeah. And then I just know, I just have to give this to Jesus. Yes. And it is so amazing that when you just get to that place where you just you get rid of everything else. You strip yeah. yourself of everything and you are before the Lord yeah. in whatever capacity, in whatever way. Yeah. And how he just comes in and in his supernatural, miraculous, most holy, significant way, yeah. he takes it. And it's not that the circumstance is gone, the situation is gone, mm -hmm. but it's that there is now peace. Yes. There is now rest. Yeah. There is now strength. There is now that determination that I can do this. Mm -hmm. I can get through this yeah. because of who he is. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And what we have to remember, girls, is that we, we lay hold of God's promises by yes. faith. Yes. Jesus responded to her, beloved daughter, your faith in me has, has released your healing. Yeah. It has released yeah. your healing. You may you may go out with peace. And when it comes to the kingdom, healing isn't something that we have to pay money for. Jesus will never deplete you of anything that has right. value in your life. That's he right. will only take what, what would drain us, you know, the, the, the leeches in our lives that, yeah. are, that are draining us. He, he always is bringing so much more than we are laying down. Um, it, um, it says that we're saved by grace through faith. That's right. You know, so we can't buy our healing. We, we have to receive it by faith. Yeah. And that's what this woman did. Absolutely. She reached out and she received her healing. That's so good. And, you know, I, I think since we're talking about faith, yeah. I think that f to have faith is one thing, mm -hmm. but your faith, true faith, yes. requires action. Sure does. You cannot just say, I have faith and then boom, yeah. there it is. It requires something from us. Yeah, right? because it, faith is not belief. Right. Belief is belief. Right. Faith is action. And we know that because... It, 
the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> so that settles that. And that's what she did. She acted on her faith. Yes, she did. She believed. Mm -hmm. She knew. She heard that there is this man, Jesus, this rabbi, who can heal me. And I'm not just going to sit here, and I'm not just going to wonder what it's going to be like to be healed. Yeah. I'm going to go for it. Definitely. I'm going to do it. And she pressed through those crowds, mm -hmm. knowing that everybody I'm touch, I'm going to make unclean. Yeah. But not only that, mm -hmm. the rabbi, I'm going to touch the rabbi, yes. Jesus, and I'm I have the potential to make him unclean. Absolutely. In my touching him. Yeah. And yeah. But that's not what happened. Mm -mm. Exactly the opposite. Yes. He made her clean. Yeah. By making her whole, by healing her. Yes. All because her faith had action to it. That's right. Right? And, and in John 8, 31 and 32, we like verse 32, and I say we like it in terms of like we, we quote it a lot, and, and I love it. It says, you know, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But it, because it says then, we should probably read the verse. The verse before that. Just one before <laughs> that. So verse 31 says, to the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, if you hold if you hold, mm. if you reach out and lay hold right. of my teaching, then you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It's the truth that we reach out and we lay hold of. This woman watched the living word walking yeah. through, walking past her, but because she decided to reach out in faith and lay hold of the living word, that's when her healing was released. That's so beautiful. And for us girls, we need to take that, that initiative, yeah. remembering who we are and reach out and touch what is ours. Absolutely. Yeah, and her faith got God's attention. Yeah, which just blows my mind. <laughs> it he got stopped. God's attention. He stopped, and he waited. It, it cracks me up because it says when, when she realized yeah. that she couldn't remain hidden. That means that he stopped, and he waited yeah. for her to identify herself. In Mark, uh, in I believe it's verse 30, the Bible says that Jesus turned around. Mm. He turned around and he said, who touched me? Wow. Right? In a crowd. In a crowd with all these people, he knew, he felt, and he said, who touched me? But I love the fact that he turned around because here he was on his way mm -hmm. to perform a miracle. And I would imagine knowing the miracle that needed to be performed of this young girl who's at death's door. Jesus, you need to get to this girl quickly. So they probably were on their way, you know, hurriedly on their way yes. with this large crowd of people. Somebody reaches out in faith, touches him because she's acting out in her faith for the promise of what her, she knows the promise belongs to her. And he turns around. Yeah. The creator of heaven and earth, the architect of the universe turned around and acknowledged her. Wow. Right? Millions, thousands, mm -hmm. hundreds, yeah. I don't know, I wasn't there, of people yeah. right all over the place. Even Peter acknowledges and says, what are you talking about, Jesus? Yeah. There's people everywhere. Yeah. Everybody's touching you. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But he knew. Yes. And I love that. And it's almost like because Jesus wanted her to identify herself as the recipient of that healing, Jesus was giving her an invitation like a public re-entry yeah. into society. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just an invitation for her. You were once a burden to society, but now you will be a blessing. Absolutely. But now you, this, is, this is your people. Yeah. Like you're welcome back home. You're welcome yeah. back in. And the thing about faith is when you put your faith into motion, mm -hmm. when you put it into action, and when you say, you know, I'm not going to sit around. I'm not going to wait for this mm -hmm. to fall on my lap. I know I need to partner with the king yes. and we need to get this done. Yes. Let me tell you something. Faith moves, moves God. Absolutely. It absolutely moves him. Mm -hmm. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. And so you want to move God. You want to get his attention. You start walking in faith. Yeah. You want to believe God. You believe in for, for something. You start praying and you start believing and you start trusting and you start walking towards that miracle, whatever yeah. it is. Maybe you have an unsaved uh, uh, a spouse. Maybe it's a, a wayward child. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a healing, whatever it is. Jesus says, come on. Come yes. on, let's do yeah. this together. I want to see your faith in action. Yes. And that's just, just exactly what she did. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what we get to do. Yes. We get to come alongside of, 
our Father God, our yes. Heavenly Father, the creator of all, speaks it, boom, there it exists. We get to come alongside of him and say, okay, let's partner. Yeah. I'm going to partner with you, Dad. I'm yeah. going to do this with you, Dad. And I'm going to trust and believe, and I'm going to walk this out in my faith. Yeah, there's so much power in our agreement yeah. with God for his will to come to yeah. earth. Jesus said, pray, God, let your yeah. kingdom come. There's so much power in our agreement. And one of the great things that Jesus said to her was, you may go with my peace. Mm. And when I think about peace, I think about the absence of conflict, yeah. the absence of war. Wow. It's like the declaration that the conflict between my will and God's will has ended. Peace occurs when what is disjointed or disaligned in me becomes aligned with God. Wow. And I express my faith through agreement with him. It is God's will for you to be healed. So right. reach out and take it. Absolutely. It is yours to agree with him in that. And to, to say inside, yes, this promise is for me. I am not the exception. And in seasons of my life where I have felt forgotten or yeah. uninvited yeah. or on the outskirts or just, you know, just by myself, for me to the Holy Spirit really taught me how to agree with him with that statement. Yeah. I am not the exception. Every time, you know, a root of rejection would try and rise up and, yeah. and take over my mind or my heart, my yeah. emotions yeah. to remind myself, I'm not the exception to God's promises. Yeah. I'm a daughter That's and right. he is my father. That's and right. this is for me as much as it is for anybody else. Absolutely. So we get God's peace and God's peace. It's a sign that we are, that we are positioned in faith to receive our promise. Mm -hmm. Peace is a sign that I, me, the branch is connected to the vine and the fruit of, of the Holy Spirit, peace yeah. is being birthed in my life. Even if I haven't received the full manifestation of my healing, yeah. it's a Absolutely. sign that I'm ready. I'm on my way. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Which yeah. I just want to quickly just share one more yes. point and it just kind of just puts the bow on it all. And that is simply that, you know, this condition had labeled her. This yes. woman, we know her as the woman with the issue of blood. Right. And, and society had cast her out. She was, you know, that kind of a person. And yet Jesus recognized her. Yeah. Not only did Jesus recognize her, Jesus turned around and identified her. Because when she said who she was and when she said, this is why I did it, Jesus says to her, beloved daughter, your faith in me has released your healing you may go in peace. He calls her his daughter. She now has an identity in him. Wow. And not only is, she, is he telling her, listen, this is who you are. Because honestly, he could have just gone on his way. Yeah. He didn't have to say anything. He could have known. She could have known. Could have all stayed quiet. But he publicly acknowledged her as his own as his daughter. Isn't that awesome? It's incredible. It's, it's incredible. Just like what you were talking about. Sometimes we can get, you know, caught up in rejection. Yeah. We can get caught up in the not good enough or not enough. Forget right. the good enough. Just, just not enough. Anything enough. <laughs> right? I mean, as, as women, yeah. I, I, oh, yeah. I know I can get caught up in that so easily. Just all the expectations, everything that's before us, all that's put on us. I mean, so much we put on ourselves. Yes. We don't even realize it, but mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. But yet Jesus laid all that aside and said, daughter, beloved daughter. And that's what he's saying to you and to me. And that's one of the many reasons why I love this story. Yeah. So many times in my life mm -hmm. have I just gone through just a sense of rejection, yeah. a sense of just less than, a sense of I'm not good enough, yeah. uh, maybe feeling a little ostracized or just feeling inadequate, whatever it is. Right. And boy, the Holy Spirit just takes me right back to this story, yes. you know, and just who he is and because of who he is, who I am yeah. to him. And the peace that floods when we begin to see ourselves as he sees us and when we begin to think of ourselves as he thinks of us. Wow. To have that mm -hmm. concept, yeah. to walk in that <laughs> changes your life. Yeah. It absolutely does. Would yeah. you close us in a word of prayer? I had mm -hmm. so much fun doing this, this story with fun. you. She's awesome. I love her so much. Yeah. Pray for us. Okay. Father, we love you and we thank you for this time that we get to look at one of your daughters yeah. and to learn from her. Lord, thank you for inspiring this account to be written down yes. so that we can see the kindness 
and the compassion and the faithfulness of Jesus Christ toward a forgotten daughter, toward a lost daughter, but that you would see her and that you would have made your power in that moment available to her. We are so thankful that the same Jesus who walked those streets in, the, in that crowd is the same Jesus who is ours. Thank you for being the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thank you for making us whole. In whatever way you choose to go about it, in whatever method, whatever process you choose to take us through to make us whole and healed and alive, Lord, we're grateful that our Jesus knows exactly where we are and he leads us from grace to grace, from strength to strength, and from glory to glory. So help us today, Jesus, to see that your eyes are on us and that your healing, your promise of healing, healing in your wings is for us and that you offer it to us and give us the boldness, the confidence, the joy, the strength to reach out and to lay hold of what you've made available to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we love you so much. So, so much.